Welcome back to the series part six of the tutorial on LangChain.js, Node.js using TypeScript and OpenAI using the same basic setup, bringing in new libraries. If you get confused, I strongly recommend that you go visit uh, part one through five. Everything will be clarified for you. And that being said, just quick overview. This .env is basically bringing in the API key from .env file. The example is like that. All you have to do is just mention this text exactly. Open AI underscore API underscore key and then put your API key in and Langchain will understand right from it because this .env config will pull it up and feed it to it. So you don't have to mention it right here when you declare your model. Uh, this is our new class, Langchain underscore URL. And in the constructor, we are instantiating the model with OpenAI. Uh, once again, we are using uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo and temperature 0.5. And in here, we are using streaming as true, where it's going to display the response in our command prompt. That being said, let's go to our actual focus of this video. The process URL to FICE vector store. This time, I'm bringing in uh, the simplified rokerbo.com and our sales page, which means this guy right here. This is a very, very long sales page. As you can see, it's almost never ending. Lots and lots of data in here. So you get the point. Okay, so this guy we're bringing in, and every step of the way, you know, using a console.log to show. Oh, you know what step it's performing right now like making a call to the url after here loading the url to the doc etc etc so at the beginning so i'm disabling uh these guys so what we're going to do we are going to see the output as we move forward so at the beginning we are just declaring this url hard code this and then use this url using the puppeteer web-based loader and this library we're collecting from Langchain Document Loader Web Puppeteer. And also, just to use these libraries, we're going to have to bring in the, the actual libraries also. So let's check out our package.json. Look at the dependencies. We're going to be using the Cheerios library and also the, the Puppeteer library, HTML to text. Of course, we're going to be using the, uh, the FICE library. So FICE node should come in dot env uh, and then uh, we need uh, the type slash puppeteer because it's typescript so make sure you load these libraries up now let's go back so using this library we're going to first fetch the, the actual uh, data from the url so we're going to use this go to the url and wait until everything is loaded up then Focus on the body element using document dot query selector body. So whatever is contained inside the body, we're going to uh, load it up in the body element and return it. And eventually we're going to close the virtual browser and return the text content. If there's an error, error is going to show up with this. So by then we will be loading up, uh, creating the loader. That's where the data will be. So then use the loader.load. We're going to load up the doc in URL docs. And then from URL docs, the first item in the array using dot zero dot page content, we're going to be loading the page content in here. So at this point, let's go see what we load up. Let's make sure all the other ones are commented out. All right. So let's save that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just handle the puppeteer one and load the document and show the page content in our output window. Let's save that and let's see where we are. Okay, good. And let's go here. We already instantiated the class by importing it from here and using the, the new keyword. And now let's call up that function. So let's save that. And we're bringing in this, uh, we're invoking this function, process URL to FICE vector store coming from this class. Now let's run npm run dev. Okay, 
So let's see what it does. Okay, making the call, loading the URL docs, and boom, this is the raw content of the body element, right? So we need to do a lot of cleanup because everything is all mushed up, you know, the text and the HTML content. So now we're gonna go ahead and implement, disable this guy. We've already seen what we needed to see. Oh, sorry, not this one. Actually, we're gonna disable this guy. And now we're bringing in the Cheerios library and Cheerios library coming in from Cheerios. And this one is not coming from the lang chain. The puppeteer was, right? And we also brought in the regular puppeteer, but anyway, let's focus on Cheerios right now. So, so we are up to here. Now we're creating this dollar object and using that dollar object, we're gonna be cleaning up all the, the scripts and the styles from the HTML body content by using this dot to remove. And once that is done, we're gonna be focusing on the inline stylings attributes, cleaning them up. We're gonna be bringing in from the body, the HTML content and replace all that with uh, empty text. So anywhere it finds inline you know, stylings, it's gonna remove. And then we're gonna go ahead and use this clean text, pass it along with the period.load and create a brand new string and then convert that into a text string using cleaned dollar body dot text function. And this time we're gonna see what content we find and how clean it gets. Save that. Let's come here. Okay, making the call and we load it up. So, you know, it looks a lot cleaner, but uh, then again, a lot of, you know, some HTML and JavaScript content still there because uh, that page, this guy right here is built with Thrive Architect. So Thrive Architect, you know, puts in lots of garbage in there. It's not gonna be all the way clean, can see right here see it looks a lot cleaner now we can actually see the text but in here we can see lots and lots of space in there and the new line uh, the ascii characters etc so this is as clean as it's gonna get so once we do that we're gonna go ahead and move to the next step where we're gonna remove all the ascii characters the new line etc so doing so we're gonna be dump all of them in the docs variable. So let's see what that's looking like. This time all the space should be gone. It's not gonna be readable to us, but uh, definitely it's gonna be a lot cleaner for an embed, right? So this is what it's gonna look like, but it's, it's not clear for us, but it's gonna be a lot cleaner or clear to our AI API. So let's uh, just disable this now. So at this point, we are ready to create a document so that we can pass it along to our uh, recursive character splitter. But since this is a just a string, huge long string, so we have to now uh, instantiate it with a uh, document class and pass it along as a page content, this doc variable. And where this is coming from, this document, let's go up right here. This is coming from Langchain document. This is gonna prepare our string for splitting. So right here, once we split it, you know, once we create a document, now we're gonna create our splitter, just like every time, you know, the chunk size 200 and overlap 50. I mean, if these are confusing to you, please, once again, I'm gonna request you to visit part one, two, three, four, and five, and everything's gonna get a lot uh, clarified for you because uh, this is a, a tutorial series, so I'm not gonna repeat a lot of stuff here. So that being said, now we have our splitter ready and our document ready, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, call the splitter dot split document and you know place that variable in here and we're gonna see what it looks like. Let's go see what a split document looks like. All right, much better. Looking nicer, looks like we are ready to fit it to our embeds. We are ready to create our embeddings. 
All right. So at this point, uh, we are creating our embeddings using the API uh, embeddings object, which we'll, we will pass to our uh, vector store. But uh, when I tried that, you know, just like the other ones, the PDF and the text, this time, since the content is so large, OpenAI actually gave me some error. It, you know, it actually went over the uh, token limit. So, so this time I had to actually be creative and create like a, you know, batch of 10 and then split it up even in smaller chunks. Uh, the 10 was, you know, sufficient for me. So now that our all docs is ready, we're going to go ahead and create our vectors tool by passing that all docs and embeddings object using the OpenAI embeddings from Langchain. And then we're going to go ahead and call that function vector store dot save and give it a location at this point you see it's empty there's nothing there i'm just going to enable this so that once this is done it's going to tell me five store uh, five vector store has been created successfully so let's save that go back and this is our split document there you go five vector store created successfully so now we should see in index and the doc store under the vector store URL. So at this point, we have successfully pulled the data from the URL, split it up, create the embed object, and then split it up farther so that we can meet our uh, token requirement right here, and then pass it to our file store, manage to create our file index successfully. So next, we're gonna go ahead and test it out. Welcome back, guys. So we are now ready to query our newly created vector store under URL. So in here, last time we used this function, process URL to FICE vector store. And now we're going to be invoking use FICE vector store, which is right here. And if, you, if you've been uh, following the series, this should be very familiar to you because this looks exactly the one we used for our text-based Q&A and for the PDF. So basically, we're just bringing in a prompt and then we're going to create our embeddings from Langchain and then uh, we're going to be creating our vector store again. This time, we're pretty much going to load the vector store from this you know, folder right here and uh, send our embeddings object so that the data is easily visible to our AI. And then we're gonna create a chain, new retrieval QA chain, where we're gonna be loading stuff using this, the model. The model is very simple as always. This guy right here, and we're still using the 3.4 Tarbo because this is good enough for this exercise. We're gonna retrieve the data using the retriever and then return source document true as we showed before, so we're not going to go over this anymore. And once this chain is created, we're going to make a call with a query. And as query, we're going to send our prompt. So now that this vector store has been created using this SLG or simplified local growth sales page, so we're going to first question we're going to ask it is what is SLG? And this is our function use files vector store. So let's save that and start the npm run dev, see what it does. All right, SLG stands for simplified local growth, blah, 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 blah. It is exactly correct. I mean, from the website, basically. So now let's ask it a few more questions, like what does SLG cost? Okay, save that. Yep, it costs twenty-seven dollars. How we know? Because right here the price it says. And next, let's ask it which kind of people it's gonna work for. There's a list right here. So, what does SLG work for, David? Let's go. Oh, there you go. The event planners, HVAC repair, machine shop, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Exactly as listed right here. Next, let's ask it off the cuff question that is not included in the context. What is Cyberize Group? 
even though we are Cyrus Group, it is our product. We never mentioned this on that website. So let's see what it says. I don't know. Perfect. So it's not going to know. And just to test it one more time, what is SpaceX? I don't know. Perfect. So out of context, it's not going to answer us. And what are the tools I can get? from slg right so let's disable that and enable this question and in here let's go all the way down and these are the list of tools that slg will provide you so let's ask it what are the tools so, all right fake review protection the private tech tools tools lists etc okay so it is supposed to give me a whole bunch of them, right? But I know why it's doing that. So let's uh, PPT4 Turbo, disable that, save this. All right, now let's see, look at that. Now it's answered all, all seven of them in a nice little list because uh, GPT 3.5 is idiot. So now it's giving me a whole bunch of extra information. And asked question, we're gonna ask it. What kind of value are we getting from $27, dollars Let's see. All right, the value we're getting is $472 worth. As it mentions right here. Once again, dead accurate, our project is a success. So we just finished grabbing an entire web page data, converting it into embeds, create a file store, and built a Q&A bot with accuracy of almost 100% at this point. And that being said, this concludes the series where we learn LangChain.js, Node.js, using TypeScript, and OpenAI API. Thanks for watching.